Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Super Sonic JV, and dang it, I lost my freaking credit card in one of my pairs of pants. So I'm gonna go through all of them and check out the pockets in order to see if I can find my credit card. Unfortunately, all I managed to find so far is this whole TV dinner, a Wii U gamepad, and a copy of Sonic the Hedgehog Pocket Adventure. I mean, it makes sense that it has Pocket in the title, right? When most people talk about Sonic games, they usually mention the classic games, the adventure games, or some of the more modern games like Generations or Forces. Yes, this game sucks, but I don't care. But back in 1999, there was a new Sonic game that was released right after Sonic Adventure that a lot of people actually forgot about. And no, not this crap, I'm talking about this crap. Sonic Pocket Adventure was a Sonic 2D platformer game developed by SNK. Yes, the same people who made Terry Bogard. And it was released on the Neo Geo Pocket Color. I had no idea what this originally was, but thankfully, Wikipedia came to my rescue. Apparently, it was a handheld console made by SNK that was similar to the Game Boy in almost every way. It had a very short lifespan, only lasting a few years. It did, however, release another version of this handheld called the new Neo Geo Pocket Color. Man, really ripping off the Game Boy now, huh? And it only released in Japan. And it sold... Horribly. There's many reasons why this thing did so bad, but one of the main reasons being the lack of games on it. But right around the time of its release, Sega made their own Sonic game and put it on the system. It was titled Sonic Pocket Adventure, and this box art was ripped straight out of Sonic Adventure. I mean, yeah, Sonic Adventure was the big release game around this time period, but if you're gonna advertise a new handheld game, you should at least use a better image for your box art, like this one. Now, playing the original version of this game can be kind of hard, because the Neo Geo Pockets are super rare and super expensive today, but thankfully, emulators are a thing today. But so are fans, so it all evens out. And without further ado, let's go ahead and jump to Sonic Pocket Adventure. What is with old Sonic games and having Sonic wag his finger at you? Maybe I should start doing that. So this is Sonic Pocket Adventure, and you gotta love that old school music. Also, the game really wants you to press A, which is quoted for some reason, like it's very special. Now if it was B, there would be a problem. I also get the options to either start off the game, or go to my room. And I think it's pretty obvious what I did. We start off by exploring Neo South Island, and I gotta say, visuals here look... eh, alright. I do like Sonic Sprite as well as the enemies, but then there's the background, that looks kinda dull and boring. The classic game's background really popped out of you and made you really appreciate that one tree there for a while, but here, they're mediocre at best, I'd say. Also, as you play through the game, you start to get more and more Sonic 2 on a Genesis vibes. And it turns out this game is based on Sonic 2 for the Genesis, but with different stage layouts and extra game modes. Well, call me a Sega CD, Wikipedia even mentions this. Now, the levels themselves are very similar to Sonic 2. Heck, even some of the secret items are in the same locations. But, some stages are a bit longer now, and there's even some new tricky platforming sections. But, then there's a bad special stages. Now, yes, they are pretty much the exact same ones from Sonic 2, but this time around, obstacles are even more difficult to see, and the controls feel awfully stiff. But the worst part is the fact that you only get 6 tries, to get a Chaos Emerald in these special stages. If you don't get it within 6 tries, you have to start all over again to get the true ending and fight the true final boss in the end. And man, this is terrible. I've never been a fan of the whole beat up special stage to get a Chaos Emerald trope in the series, but limiting my attempts with this poorly controlled stage is a bad idea. Now you do get one Emerald from Knuckles, but Eggman steals it, and Knuckles really doesn't like that. Once you beat Eggman though, you do get the Emerald, but like I said, that's only one Emerald and you need all seven to win. You probably also noticed these collectibles I'm picking up. Turns out these are puzzle pieces. There's a few in every level and you can use them to solve some puzzles and get some nice artwork. It's nothing too special and they serve no other purpose than a simple collectible, but it's still pretty fun to find them all. The music in this game is actually pretty decent. Although a lot of it is just remixes of music tracks in Sonic 3, and while I do like the music a lot in Sonic 3, it definitely would have been nice to hear some new tracks here. They easily could have used a song from Sonic 7. <laughs> 
Another thing I'd like to mention are the boss battles. While most of the game revolves around Sonic 2's level design, the bosses are brand new ones. They're alright for the most part, but then there's this one, with the terrible hitboxes. It fires in multiple directions, and if you get hit, you'll guarantee you lose your rings off screen. Which they still haven't fixed to this very day for some reason. Also, apparently you can stand on top of explosions. Why is this a thing? I don't know, but you can do it. The game itself is actually pretty short, only being about an hour long, and the final boss, well, the true final boss anyways, is basically Doomsday Zone, but with Sky Sanctuary playing in the background? Uh, okay. Again, you should have used Sonic 7 music instead, people. The final boss itself is fine and all, but nothing too great. Even Eggman agrees. And that's it. That's Sonic Pocket Adventure. And we also get some really nice ending scenes at the end of the game to let us know. Yeah, we just played this game. I also gotta mention, this was kind of the very last classic Sonic game. I mean, his eyes are green now, and even Eggman is rocking his new outfit. And tell me, it came out, so... Yeah, the classic games were kind of done back then. Overall, this game was alright for the most part. Sure, the special stages sucked. Like, a lot. And some of the bosses are annoying, like this one. But the level design and graphics are actually pretty nice. For some reason, I thought people on the internet hated this game. But it received some really great reviews, actually. IGN gave it a 10 out of 10, so I know it actually sucked. So that was Sonic Pocket Adventure, and honestly, it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Sure, it may have been a clone of Sonic 2, but it still had plenty of fun moments. The Neo Geo Pocket Color may not have lasted too long, but look on the bright side, at least I finally remember what pants I put my credit card in. These have no pockets. Okay, well I just checked my credit card statement, and what do you know, the person who stole my credit card really likes buying a Neo Geo Pocket Color. The blue edition.